Oh, that's nice. Chapter 16. I guess you know how this starts. Before I go any further, I should warn anybody drinking along with me that this chapter has a lot of drink potential. A lot comes to pass in this book. About, oh, at least 31 occasions something comes to pass. That's a quick guess, a quick count I did earlier. Thinking I should probably start doing a tally on all these, maybe a tally on the entire book. Find out just how many there are. I'm sure somebody else kept track, but I'm not aware of it. Chapter, chapter 16 of First Nephi. And now it came to pass, this drink, that after I, Nephi, had made an end to, of speaking to my brethren, trust me, he's not done talking. He just took a breath. He made an end to talking to his brethren. Behold, they said unto me, Thou hast declared unto us hard things, more than we are able to bear. I hope I have enough beer. And it came to pass that I said unto them that I knew that I had spoken hard things against the wicked according to the truth. I dig how people just hijack words. Yeah. Very Orwellian. And the righteous have I justified. Yourself being included among them, Nephi, no doubt. <sighs> and testified that they should be lifted up at the last day. We're talking rapture. <sighs> Wherefore, the guilty taketh the truth to be hard, for it cutteth them to the very center. That terrible swift sword. And now, my brethren, if ye were righteous, and we're willing to hearken unto the truth <clears throat> and give heed unto it that ye may walk uprightly before God. Then ye would not murmur because of the truth. Just keep using that word. It might stick. And say, thou speakest hard things against us. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did exhort my brothers with all diligence. So he didn't come, uh, uh, stop, oh wait, what is it? He didn't cease to speak to his brother, and he's still talking to him. He finished a sentence. That's a big deal in this book. They do run on. I... And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did exhort my brothers, brethren with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. And it came to pass that they did humble themselves before the Lord. Insomuch that I had joy and great hope of them that they would walk in the path of righteousness. Now I, wait, now all these things were said and done as my father dwelt in a tent in the valley which he called Lemuel. And it doesn't appear in any of the maps here, or their concordance, or their index. Sounds biblical. I thought maybe it was in here, but I couldn't find it. If, if anybody knows where uh, Lemuel <laughs> or Shazer. If sh I couldn't find Shazer e either um, in this book. so But it's not as perfect as uh, ta -da! this golden book. 
<sighs> and it came to pass that they did humble themselves. Uh, now all these things. Oh wait, and and it came to pass that I Nephi. Okay, caught up. Took one of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and she will never be named. <laughs> At least he named his mama. At least he calls her her, her by name. Sariah. They call the wind Sariah. Sariasis. All right. So anyway, he marries some woman without a name, and um, that's about that. And also my brethren took of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also Zoram took the eldest daughter of Ishmael to wife. Wow, sounds so perfect. You know, seven brides for seven brothers and all that shit. And thus my father had fulfilled all the commandments of the Lord, which had been given unto him. And also I... <coughs> oh, there it is. And also I, Nephi had been blessed of the Lord exceedingly. <laughs> Too bad your brothers are slackers. They must... I hope they're not jealous. <sighs> and it came to pass that the voice of the Lord spake unto my father by night. No wonder Nephi thinks he hears voices I mean, it must run in the family. These voices in the head. Yeah. The voice of the Lord spake unto my father by night and commanded him that on the morrow he should take his journey into the wilderness. And it came to pass that as my father arose in the morning and went forth to the tent door, to his great astonishment, he beheld up upon the ground a round ball of curious workmanship, and it was of fine brass. And within the ball were two spindles, and one pointed the way whither we should go into the wilderness. It's a compass. They call it a directioner, I think, or something. I forget. We'll get to it. Uh, it just appeared, you know. I mean, it's at, inside his tent at the door, and he's walking. Or he walked out, and it was there. I'm not sure which. Sounds like it was in his tent. but uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a piece of machinery that dropped off of uh, Ezekiel's wheel. Could be. Hmm. And it came to pass that we did gather together whatever things we should carry into the wilderness, and all the remainders, remainder of our provisions which the Lord had given unto us, and we did take seed of every kind. <laughs> that we might carry into the wilderness. And it came to pass. Yeah. Better not read too fast, I pass out. Man. Now I know what it's like to, to drink a book. <laughs> and it came to pass that we did take our tents and depart into the wilderness across the river Laman the last time it'll ever be called that again. <laughs> now it's called something else. <laughs> the River Laman. And the Valley Lemuel. <laughs> to be renamed immediately. Now they've left. And it came to pass that we traveled for a space of four days 
That's nice. Space of four days. We're being specific here. Near, nearly a south southeast direction, and we did pinch our <laughs> pitch our tents again, and we did call the name of the place Shazar. Shazar, excuse me. Because <sighs> tight. Once again, couldn't find it on the map in that area. Anywhere, actually, the name. Uh, sure sounds Old Testament, but <clears throat> couldn't find it. I don't know. You know, I mean, I've read this book a few times. Uh, I don't know how many times I've read it, actually. Uh, this, I'm going on my fourth, fourth time. You're all going along with me this time. I, I can't go alone folks. <laughs> anyway, never heard of Shazer, but it sounds Old Testament. Or like a good name for a pizzeria. Anyway. And it came to pass that we did take our bows and our arrows and go wait and it came to pass that we took we did take our bows and our arrows and go forth into the wilderness to slay food <sighs> for our families. And after we had slain food for our families, we did return again to our families in the wilderness to the place of Shazar. Wow, like a self-contained haiku of a story. What's the point? You went hunting. Mission accomplished. You went home. I know he's trying to do some kind of a dramatic thing, but it ain't working. <sighs> and we did go forth again in the wilderness. See, <laughs> the whole point is... I don't know what the point is for why they had that successful mission even mentioned. I mean, it could have said we were, we did fine, and then everything went south on us. <sighs> and we did go forth again in the wilderness, following the same direction, keeping in the most fertile parts of the wilderness, which were in the borders of the Red Sea. <sighs> And it came to pass that we did travel for the space of many days. Now we're not suddenly in specific. I mean, for us, the space of four days. Now, we did travel for the space of many days. Okay. Gee, what do I smell? It smells like... Well, I'm a farm boy. That smells kind of like bullshit. And I shoveled plenty, so I know what it smells like. Like this. <sighs> and it came to pass that we did travel the space many days. I don't know if I drank for that one. That's the problem with this. And there's 31 of them. Oh, shit. All right. Got to pay attention to what I'm doing here. And it, and, and it came to pass that we did travel for the space of many days, slaying food by the way, with our bows and our arrows and our stones and our slings. And we did follow the directions of the ball, that brass ball that Lehi found to his great astonishment, that just deus ex machina, I think they call it, or deus ex machina, excuse me. Help the plot along. You know, I mean, how are they going to know which direction to go in? Throw them a compass. Ah, they didn't even get Cracker Jacks with them. With it, you know. <laughs> ah. And after we... Da, 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 uh, we did pitch our tents for a space of a time. After many days of... 
have a space of many days, they they pinch their tents for a space of time. From specific to this, that we might again rest ourselves and obtain food for our families. And it came to pass that as I, Nephi, went forth to slay food, behold, I did, I did break my bow. His bow, he broke it, which was made of fine steel. I mean, steel was pretty rare at the beginning of the Iron Age, extremely rare. And usually done wrong. I don't think they were making any steel bows. I've never heard of an archaeologist finding one. But Nephi had a steel bow and he broke it somehow. Okay. And after I did break my bow, behold, my brethren were angry with me because of the loss of my bow. For I did obtain no food. And it came to pass that we did return without food. To our families, and being much fatigued because of their journey and journeying, they did suffer much for the want of food. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. And it came to pass that Laman and Lemuel and the sons of Ishmael did begin to murmur exceedingly because of their sufferings, because of, wait, because of their sufferings and afflictions in the wilderness. And also my father began to murmur against his God, wait, or against the Lord, his God, yea, and they were all exceeding sorrowful, sorrowful, even that they did murmur against the Lord. So even Lehi is bitching now. Times are tough. How about a little manna, God? I mean, that's an old trick. Sprinkle a little manna, you know, a little bread fall from heaven. <sighs> Now it came to pass that I, Nephi, having been afflicted, afflicted with my brethren because of the loss of my bow, and their bows having lost their springs, and it, no, they didn't lose their bow strings. They lost their springs. That's what it says. I guess they lost their springiness. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They lost their springs. Has an archaeologist found any steel bows with springs? <laughs> uh, First Nephi sixteen twenty one or twenty. Excuse me. In case you want to check it out. See if I'm bullshitting you. Just reporting the facts. Good as gold. <sighs> All right, now it came to pass that I, Nephi, having been afflicted with my brethren because of the loss of my bow and their bows having lost their springs, Sorry, I went on a tangent. I lost my place. It began to be exceedingly difficult, yea, insomuch that we could obtain no food. And it came to pass
that I, Nephi, <laughs> he keeps doing that. Because it's not like he has to economize or anything. Did speak much unto my brethren because of the heart of their hardened. Wait, because they had hardened their hearts again. Those bastards, they've hardened their hearts again. Even unto complaining against the Lord their God. That's kind of anticlimactic after their dad was doing it. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make out of wood a bow. That was pretty clever. <sighs> and out of a straight stick, an arrow is set. I got a question. I'm sorry, I got to derail this whole thing here. But they had slings and stones. You know, that's all they needed. What's this all this bitching about it? A steel bow with springs. What the fuck? Slings! King David brought down a giant with a sling. He killed a lion and maybe a bear. I forgot which. I've read this book, but like I said, uh, you know, leaky vessel. I <sighs> wonder why. All they needed was their slings. What's... <laughs> That's better. He made an arrow with a straight stick. Wherefore, I did arm myself with a bow and an, and an arrow. Uh, a bow and arrow. Apparently has one arrow. That's all he needs. Just one. God damn it, I lost my place again. Oh, bow and arrow. With a sling and with stones. And I said unto my father, Whither shall I go to obtain food? And it came to pass that he did inquire of the Lord. For they had humbled themselves because of my word. You're the man, Nephi, biatch. <laughs> For I did say many things unto them in the energy of my soul. <laughs> God damn, this is a killer chapter. Oh, I hope I can hang long enough. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came unto my father, and he was truly chastened because of his murmuring against the Lord, insomuch that he was brought down into the depths of sorrow. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord said unto him, Look upon the ball, and behold the things which are written. You know, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, if an angel's got a message, they just tell you. These ones make you read. <laughs> I mean, Le Lehi, read a book. While I stand waiting. Instead of just telling him. <laughs> now they got this fortune. This uh, magic ball. Which is a compass. But it's it's a ball of brass. And it, it's got messages on it. That change from time to time. <laughs> but they never tell us what they are. Ah. <sighs> And it came to pass that when my 
when my father beheld the things which were written upon the ball, he did fear and tremble exceedingly, just like when he read the book that the angel gave him to read, <laughs> instead of telling him. And also my brethren and the sons of Ishmael and our wives, who were never named, because, you know, they just make babies, that's all. And clean up and shit, you know. Give them a duster for Mother's Day. It's their job. Shit. And it came to pass. That I, Nephi, beheld the pointers which were in the ball, the magic brass, no, fine brass ball, excuse me, it was fine brass. <laughs> and they did work according to the faith and diligence and heed which we did give unto them. See, the magic only works if you believe real hard. And there was also written upon them a new writing, which was plain to read, which did give us understanding concerning the ways of the Lord. And it was written and changed from time to time according to the faith and diligence which we gave unto it. This magic ball that just popped up. Like I said, maybe it fell off of Ezekiel's wheel. Uh, and thus we, thus we see that by small means the Lord can bring great things. You mean like giving you a magic ball that's a compass and actually also gives you messages directly from God. God damn. Some people just aren't easily impressed. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did go forth up into the top of the mountain, some mountain somewhere near Shazar. So we still don't know where it is. According to the directions which were upon the ball. I guess that's what the writing said. They don't tell us. No quotations. A little tipsy. And it came to pass that I did slay wild beasts with this one arrow and some rocks, insomuch that I did obtain food for our families. This is some riveting, uh, you know, writing here. I mean, all that shit was fucking necessary. I mean, they could have taken this out and made room for even more ripped off Isaiah. But this is some important fucking shit for some reason. And it came to pass that I did return to our tents, bearing the beasts which I had slain. <sighs> and now, when they beheld that I had obtained food, how great was their joy! <laughs> and it came to pass in the middle of the fucking paragraph. that they did humble themselves before the Lord and did give 
thanks unto him. I think I'm starting to feel it here. And it came to pass that they did again take our journey, traveling nearly the same course as in the beginning. <coughs> And after we had traveled for the space of many days, many days, boy, they just lost track. They don't even bother to count anymore. It must be such a grueling ordeal. Hmm. We did pinch our pitch our tents again that we might tarry for a space of a time that long, really. A space of a time? A whole space of a time? How many spaces of a time, I wonder? Well, that'll have to wait. And it came to pass that Ishmael died and was buried in the place which we called Nahum. And because they called, they called it that, we'll never know from any map contained in this book. And I don't know. Let's, let's look at the only maps they give us. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I don't see it there either. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have done that. Now I lost my place. Oh, wow. Space of many days. For a space of time. <clears throat> Like I said, this one is a killer chapter. And it came to pass that the daughters of Ishmael did mourn exceedingly because of the loss of their father and because of their afflictions in the wilderness. And they did murmur against my father because he had brought them out of the land of Jerusalem, saying, Our father is dead. Yea, and we have wandered much in the wilderness, and we have suffered much affliction, hunger, thirst, and fatigue. And after all these sufferings, we must perish in the wilderness with hunger. And thus did they murmur against my father, and also against me. And they did, and they were desirous to return again to Jerusalem. And Laman said unto Lemuel, and also unto the sons of Ishmael, Behold, let us slay our, let us slay our father and also our brother Nephi, who have taken it upon him, who has taken it upon him to be our ruler, and our teacher. You can't tell these guys anything. Who are his elder brethren? I admit it, Nephi is annoying. Now he says that the Lord has talked with him, and also that angels have ministered unto him. But behold, we know that he lies unto us, and he tells us these things. And he worketh many things by his cunning arts that he may deceive our eyes, thinking perhaps that he may lead us away into some strange wilderness, and after he has led us away, he has thought to make himself a king and a ruler over, ruler over us, that he may do to us according to his will and his pleasure. And also this manner did my brother Laman did my brother Laman stir up their hearts to anger? <sighs> and it came to pass that the Lord was with us, yea, even the <laughs> yea, <laughs> even the voice of the Lord came and did speak many words unto them. <laughs> That's awfully handy. Soften that heart, those hearts up again. And did chasten them exceedingly, this voice, voices. 
<laughs> and after they were chastened by the voice of the Lord, they did turn away their anger and did repent of their sins. Insomuch that the Lord did bless us again with food that we did not perish. And that's it. That was a bitch of a chapter, man. Hey, I got two whole beers left. Anyhow, let me know if you find Shazar or Lemuel or the Layman River on any maps. Let me know. I'd be very interested to find this out because I'm just trying to understand with all due respect.